Hey YouTube, Dave here. Uh, today I'm going to do a video for you on um, some uh, backyard portable QRP uh, digital mode operations. Um, I'm going to be using my Yaesu FT817ND uh, all mode, all band radio. Uh, I've got a MacBook Pro here running FL Digi. I've got a, a signal link USB for my digital interface and my antenna is going to be a 20 meter vertical antenna and I'll also provide uh, a link to uh, an article I wrote uh, which has some uh, details on the construction but I'm also going to show you that. I'll also show you how we hook the radio and all the equipment together. Uh, there's a fair amount of spaghetti um, but that'll give you an idea how you would need to set up something similar. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I will uh, show you some close-ups of the antenna before I set it up. Uh, this is a, a pretty good antenna. Uh, it's uh, resonant, so I'm not using a, an antenna tuna today. And um, uh, you can put it together for under $100 and it's uh, pretty portable. I'm not sure that I'd want to backpack with it because there's a big spike on it, which is used for uh, uh, holding it uh, upright. Uh, but I'll show you that uh, next. All right, here we go. This is a look at the antenna components which uh, we're going to be using today. Uh, what we have is uh, this part right here is a telescoping stainless steel whip made by MFJ. Uh, what looks like speaker wire or lamp cord um, is, are going to be my ground radials. Then we have the spike that we drive into the ground. That's just made from a piece of aluminum rod with a with a point filed on the end of it. I picked that up at Lowe's, I think, possibly Home Depot. And then there's a CB antenna mount, which is what we use for attaching the vertical to the uh, the ground spike. And then if you go back here to my somewhat messy porch, uh, 25 foot feed line. So what I'll do is I'm going to uh, assemble this, drive it into the ground, and then I'll show you what it looks like after it's all set up. Okay, we've got the antenna set up now. Um, it is a 20 meter vertical. As you can see it goes up pretty high. And I uh, just wanted to show you a little bit more of the base here. You can see the radials coming out. And the way that I have the radials attached is I put, um, uh, I crimp some uh, spade connectors on the end and help secure them with uh, heat shrink tubing and then they're held on with these bolts and wing nuts. So I'm using six radials. You could use less, you could use more. It all, it all depends on how much you want to use. One thing I found is you do want to drive this in pretty good. Uh, I needed to use a hammer today because the earth is kind of hard. And um, uh, if you don't drive it in far enough, uh, it can get a bit tippy in the wind. But you can see also here there's the standard SO239 uh, barrel connector. All right, I'm going to go show you now some of how the uh, radio equipment is hooked up. Okay, we have the 817 here. I'm using the front panel connector for the antenna because when you're working on battery power it actually uses a little bit less uh, power, uh, less electricity. Uh, the signal links on top, you can see I have some add-on um, legs and uh, those are I got off of an eBay provider. So let's take a look at the various connections that we have. So aside from the antenna, the USB signal link on the back there's a 3.5 millimeter cable that goes from the speaker jack on the back to the speaker jack on the radio. That allows the signal link and the computer to hear it. We have from the radio interface on the, um, uh, on the signal link, it goes into the data port on the back. And then there's a USB cable that goes from the signal link over to the computer. And then 
This other one is the USB cat cable, which gives me rig control. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is go over how we have FL Digi configured um, for rig control, the sound card, and uh, can also start with the operator. The operator is just where you put your information in and stuff like your call sign, your location, your grid square, and your antenna. For the rig, I'm using Hamlib and uh, there's an entry here for the 817. The device is this right here and uh, one thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the baud rate set correctly and with my radio it's set at 4800 baud. Audio, we're using the USB audio codec because we're using a Signalink USB. And then after you have all these configured, you hit save and close. So again, uh, important things are your operator, the rig, and there are several different options here, but uh, if Hamlib is available for your radio, I do recommend it. Uh, it seems to work quite well. And then audio, of course. So, uh, since I'm using a Signalink USB, it's the USB audio codec for both capture and playback. So you hit save and you hit close. And we can see here that uh, we had somebody, uh, somebody calling and we're receiving it. This one here looks like another signal we might be able to decode. And you can see how here in this in this window, the top window, that's where your incoming stuff is uh, decoded. We are back on 20 meters PSK31 and um, wanted to show you what it looked like when we've got multiple signals coming in. Things were a bit better than when I tried looking at this earlier in the day. Could be a combination of better band conditions, or it may be just that uh, there are more folks out there in, the ha in their ham shacks. But you can see now down here in in the waterfall, there's multiple signals here. So there's one here on the left. It's kind of faint. This one was fairly strong. This one's somewhat strong. But we've got some more coming in, it looks like. So for this one, for example. This one's coming in fair amount of garbage along with it. Oh. This one looks good. And you can see it being decoded up here. And we can see also this was from a VE4 DPR which is uh, a Canadian guy. Let's see. This one is very strong. This is what you like to see. And uh, looks like he's going to give us all the nuts and bolts details of what he's got in his shack. And this is uh, the kind of thing that a lot of operators set up in macros. Uh, they call them brag macros and um, so this is something he could set up using the uh, he could send automatically using the brag button in uh, FL Digi and he's also using a signal link USB like I am like about digital modes is that they're very uh, efficient and that you're not just depending upon the human ear to pick a signal out of the ether so um, we're back a few minutes after um, I had called CQ last and 
uh, I pulled up the web page for uh, PSK Reporter, and that shows both the uh, signals that I've received and uh, where my signal was received by somebody else. So if we just minimize FL Digi here for a minute, uh, right now we can see these are the signals that I've received, which obviously isn't a whole heck of a lot. But um, uh, looks like we, you know, there, there's me here near Philadelphia. Um, received the gentleman in Georgia, Tennessee, and if we zoom in a little bit, we can see where this other one is. And he looks like he's in northern Mississippi. Right on the Mississippi-Tennessee line. Yep, Mississippi. You can see over here. Gives you that information. Zoom back out a little bit. And we can change over to a view for signal sent by me. And you can see that my signal actually made it all the way out to the West Coast. Um, keep in mind, I'm only transmitting with 5 watts. So that's, that's pretty good. Somebody else uh, was able to detect my signal. This uh, looks like 2,500 miles away. Probably about the same amount. Then I was also hitting the Midwest. Uh, looks like Wisconsin, and this looks like it's either Texas or Oklahoma. Yep, that looks like Texas. Yep, Texas, and of course down into Florida. And I always seem to have pretty good luck uh, getting up and down the East Coast. And if I was using um, uh, other other digital modes, this was PSK 31, I might actually even be able to, to get further.